Hey, what's up, guys? So, I had a customer mix video up, but I'm redoing it because I think I tried to simplify it so much that it actually became confusing. So, I'm, I'm redoing it. This is going to be the easiest way to do a custom motor mix. First, let's talk about why you would want a custom motor mix and when would you use one. You would use one if you were using a frame that is not a true X. I know this resembles an X, but it's not a true X because the distance between the motors horizontally and vertically are not the same. If you are using a true X frame, then a custom motor mix is going to do absolutely nothing for you because that's actually the default in Betaflight and CleanFlight. So just to show you, if you go to configuration and you notice how there's a uh, you pick quad X and then it shows a picture of a you know a, a frame similar to this, this is actually the numbers that it's already looking at and it's all ones, meaning that your flight controller thinks by default your motors are the same distance to from the flight controller to center uh, all four measurements are the same so if you do this custom motor mix and you do have a true X frame you will still end up with all ones for everyone else this is how you uh, change that well as far as the explanation of why we're doing this it's because uh, a custom motor mix is going to help with the flight controllers I guess you could say algorithm of measuring how much thrust to give to each individual motor. Uh, just for example, if one motor is closer to the center, then it might need more thrust to complete that roll or that flip than, say, a motor that's further away that needs less thrust. So now if we go to iForce2D.net Mixer Calc, I'll just leave this link for you in the description below to help you find it easier. And then if we scroll down, we will see uh, a true X frame right here. Next I'm just going to click on any of these frames. I'm just going to do ZMR250 and you'll notice that it now moved because as we enter in these measurements these will change and by the end of it this picture should resemble your multi-rotor. Next you need a digital caliper or you can use a roller, both work. Um, a roller might not be as accurate down to the millimeter but uh, it you don't have to be that accurate, it's not going to matter. Uh, if you do use a digital caliper, this is a 6 inch and you'll notice that it's not long enough. It's long enough here, but not here or here. So in that case I'm using a 12 inch. But like I said, you can use a 12 inch roller. It's going to work just as well. Now looking at these digits, the first two digits are the motor numbers. So this first measurement is between motors uh, 1 and 2. And then the third digit is the measurement in millimeters. So I want to measure between motors 1 and 2. And you, you're not measuring from the outside of the motor to the outside of the motor. You're actually measuring center to center. So basically the like center of the nut. I'm getting 129.6 millimeters. I'm just going to round that up to 130. So here I will just type in 130. And notice the distance is going to change and it also shows you the measurement right here. Next is motors 3 and 4. That's going to be the same measurement so I don't have to re-measure. I'm just going to enter 130 in again. Then we've got 1 and 3. I'm getting 128.8. Once again I will just round up to 129. Next is 2 and 4. For some of you guys, this might be the same measurement as 1 and 3, but for me it's not. So I will have to take another measurement. I'm getting 188. Next is 1 and 4. And this measurement should be the same measurement as the size of your frame. For example, this is a Hellbender 204, so it should be pretty close to 204. I'm getting 203.7, so that is correct. If we round up, that is 204. And then 2 and 3 is going to be the same one, so I will do 204 again. Now, this picture should resemble your frame. And this is going to allow the flight controller to know the, exactly the location of what your motors are. 
Now these final two digits, this is basically saying that motors two and four are aligned horizontally and one and three are aligned horizontally, which is accurate, that is true, so I'm just gonna leave it just like that. Next, if we come down here and click this drop down box, it's gonna say base flight, clean flight before 1.0, or 1.1 which was a long time ago I would assume nobody is using uh, firmware from way back then then we also have clean flight from 1.1 onwards if you're using beta flight say like right now we've got beta flight uh, 3.0 uh, it's gonna be the same thing so just click this now we will highlight all of this copy it plug a USB in into our flight controller go into beta flight come down to CLI and we want to paste then press enter like you're not if you're not seeing anything right here just go ahead and press enter anyway because it's still there now type save and enter now to check to make sure that it did take and everything is working uh, a few different ways first you probably notice this box this box means that you now have a custom motor mix if the box is not moving with your multi-rotor, that's probably because you have the accelerometer turned off. Also, if you go to configuration, you will now see custom mixer. And finally, if you go to CLI and type in mmix, press enter, you now see these different measurements. They're not all ones anymore. And that's basically going to get, do it, guys. So that's how you uh, do a custom motor mix. So I. Uh, hope this helped you out. I hope it was uh, less confusing this time. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you again soon.